So manipulation would seem like a pretty cut and dry thing and you may even be expecting me to manipulate you into some sort of act, I guess for argument's sake. Let's say that act is pressing the subscribe button for the New World Review, which I have been very subtly and subliminally hinting at through this intro. And I guarantee that you haven't even noticed, but all of a sudden you are going to be receiving regular Hunt Hunter content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed, so you're welcome. Hello and welcome to the New World Review, your source for everything anime and manga, and today we will be continuing our journey down the Nen rabbit hole and diving deep into the realm of manipulation. And as always, just in case you're not familiar with the very basic concepts of Nen, then please do go and check out my Nen Explained video, because a lot of the information there will be assumed knowledge for this one. But with that said, manipulation is quite probably the most straightforward application of aura, which essentially sees the user apply this affinity to gain control of living or non-living beings, which can even include other constructs formed from aura. So that seems pretty absurdly powerful, especially when you consider that all you really need to do to win a battle is take control of your enemy. However, as with all things Nen related, it isn't quite that simple. For a start, there are varying levels of control granted to manipulators, which are generally dependent on the difficulty required to invoke the ability. You know, standard Nen business, the harder it is to activate, the more control a manipulator will be granted. Furthermore, the world of manipulation also can't be thought of as simple mind control or whatnot, because there have been four, count them four, identified subtypings of mind control, which are soliciting, coercive, pseudo-coercive, and the complicated sounding diffusive induction typing. So even if we are just adhering to pure manipulation, it is much more of a subtle art form than you may initially believe. And that's before we get into all of the madness about what happens when manipulation is mixed with other affinities, which can produce some truly stunning Hatsu. First up though, we have Professor Hisoka's personality test, and he would define a manipulator as someone who is profoundly logical and tends to hold a strong desire to keep their loved ones safe. However, they are prone to individual crusades, whereby they ignore whatever anybody else around them has to say. And I think that's certainly true in the case of one particular manipulator, but I don't know about this one. We'll see how Hisoka's philosophy here holds up as we explore the art form. But I suppose to begin with, we do need to highlight Illumi Zoldik, who is, you know, the manipulator of Hunter Hunter. He is by far the most dangerous pure manipulator that we'll be looking into here today. And his typical display of Nen can be seen in his corpse control Hatsu, where he sticks a collective of his many, many needles into the head of a deceased individual. And then that allows Illumi to manipulate their actions. And the technical explanation for this would be Illumi infusing his needles with a portion of his own aura. Thus, injecting said aura into a corpse and giving him control via that methodology. But this is not limited to dead folk because Illumi also has a similar technique for taking control of the living known as needle people. And in this case, Illumi imbues a needle with a significantly larger amount of aura. So I guess we'll call it some sort of special needle. And he then thrusts that into the skull of an individual who then has to follow the commands of Illumi. And very notably, these victims are generally capable of much more complex actions as opposed to the corpse control. Although very sadly, even if a needle person was to survive the ordeal, thrust upon them by Illumi, then they are likely to be crippled for the rest of their life. But what I really want to emphasize is that Needle People is an extreme mastery of manipulation that can really only be invoked by a figure with exceptional aura reserves, especially in the case of Illumi, given that he is able to control a whole horde of people and not just a select few. But as a manipulation master, Illumi is also capable of much more subtle use, which can be seen in his brother Killua actually. When Killua was younger, Illumi used a version of Needle People on him, which we know as Hypnotic Spell which saw Illumi insert a needle into Killua's brain and effectively program him not to commit certain actions or pre-program responses to various situations. And as such, if Killua were to resist, he would be struck down with crippling fear, forcing him to do whatever Illumi had pre-programmed. And finally, Illumi is also no stranger to using manipulation on himself with his famed body alteration, where once again, he imbues needles with aura, but sticks them into himself and manipulates his own body into a different physical construct, a disguise that he is allegedly able to keep up for around around five hours at most, although he has noted that it is incredibly painful to invoke. But this actually brings up a rather good point in that the typical thought in regards to manipulation is to place someone else under your control. But the manipulation of oneself can actually result in some pretty limit breaking techniques. And for an example of this, we will now turn to Shalnak of the Phantom Troop. Now his whole gimmick is very, very similar to that of Illumi, with Shalnak's Hatsu being known as Black Voice, which grants him two antennae that can be stuck into a target with the same theory behind Illumi's needles, except that Shalnak needs to control his targets through a mobile phone type device. Now, due to this being much more restrictive than Illumi's manipulation, Shalnak is granted far greater control of his targets and he can even set them into an autopilot mode. However, this is also the key to Shalnak's self-manipulation as if he places an antenna on himself, providing an instruction and then sets himself to autopilot mode, then it allows him to push his physical limits, resulting in a significant aura output boost and devastating physical abilities with 
the help of said aura. However, it does come with a gigantic risk, being that once he has engaged in autopilot mode, he cannot disengage until his task has been completed, which is a very, very high risk, high reward scenario. But it does also come with another benefit, which is providing Sharnok an immunity to any other manipulation Hatsu of other users, which was exceptionally relevant that one time during the Chimera Antark. Because manipulation operates on a first come first serve basis. So once a target has been captured by one manipulator, it cannot be captured by another. Then again, manipulation need not necessarily be so potent or sinister. And in fact, the large majority of manipulators take a much more simplistic approach to their abilities, such as Baze, for example. The condition to activate her heart soon, known as Instant Lover, is simply to kiss her target, which causes them to become instantly infatuated with her to the point where they are willing to follow her every command for a total of three hours. So it's a very simple activation cost for a very modest amount of control. With that said, it is possible that there are other conditions attached to this Hatsu, as in the Viz translation, Baze makes a point of saying that she can make a manservant out of anyone that she steals a kiss from with instant lover, implying via the word manservant that the target must be male and that the kiss more than likely needs to be non-consensual. And then there's also the obvious that the kiss may need to involve lip contact, which is very restrictive when you think about it because there are unlikely to be many Nen veterans that would easily allow such close contact, even for someone like Baze. Now, as for one person who rather foolishly did being Squala, he is also a basic manipulator who controls a glorious pack of dogs under the condition that he takes great care of them. So Squala has effectively sold his services to his dogs in exchange for their enhanced services, which is, you know, it's an interesting deal. What I will say at this point though, is that pretty much every ability I've gone over thus far is an example of coercive manipulation, which very simply means manipulators engaging in this brand of power gain total control over their targets. Quite simple, but as I stated in the intro, there are indeed other brands. The first of which being solicitation, which isn't necessarily what the name implies it to be actually, but essentially abilities of this type of manipulation leave their targets free will intact, but place a condition upon them, which will generally work in favor of the manipulator. And a more modern example of this would be the guardian Nen beast of Ninth Prince Hawkenberg, which is capable of rewriting and thus manipulating the memory of its target. And furthermore, you could also maybe call Illumi's hypnotic spell a form of solicitation, given that it left Killua with his own free will, but also gave gave him a set of conditions to live by until the removal of the needle in his brain. Although having said that, there is probably also a great argument to be made that Hypnotic Spell is more of a pseudo coercive ability, the definite of which is a Hatsu that traps a target into a situation where they have no choice but to relinquish control of their body or to enact a manipulator's command. And a more solid example of this can be seen in yet another Guardian and Beast, but this time of 12th Prince Momose, who has the infamous are you free giant mouse thing, which repeatedly asks a target if they are free until they respond with a yes, at which point a favor is asked of the target, which usually involves the murder of everyone around them, which the target is then forced to carry out. So Hypnotic Spell could quite possibly be a pseudo coercive ability as well, because it tends to force Killua into a situation whereby he has no choice but to enact Illumi's commands. In any case, the final brand we know of is the tricky sounding diffusive induction type, which rather sadly has not been technically fleshed out, but it has been described as minimally coercive, but capable of influencing a large number of people rather than a singular target. And yet another Nen Beast, this time being 8th Prince Salis Alice, was defined as being in this category. And it basically had the effect of emitting smoke, which when breathed in, will gradually sway the opinion of that individual into one that favors Prince Salis Alice. So it's kind of like forcing them in a coercive way, but I honestly find it much more similar to solicitation, whereby the beast is simply manipulating opinion, but say according to Togashi, it is a diffusive induction type, and maybe, very maybe, we'll get a proper definition of that in the future. Now that's enough of pure manipulation for now, because no video covering this brand of Nen would be complete without giving some time to Mr. Moral, who is one of the finest manipulators in the series. Now, if Illumi can be described as the most powerful pure manipulator that we know of, then Moral is certainly one of the most powerful splash manipulators, meaning that he incorporates it into a Hatsu with two other affinities being transmutation and emission to perform the ability Deep Purple. And this allows Moral to craft and control a maximum of 216 smoky constructs. However, with this many, Moral has limited control over them, whereas if the number is compressed to around 50, then he can wield them with complex actions as well. And I'm not gonna get into the whole transmutation argument in this video because I covered it in the transmuter one, but basically what Moral does is he emits a core of aura. He then transmutes more of his aura into smoke, wraps it around that core and issues commands to the resulting construct via the core through manipulation. However, Moral can also perform much more simplistic actions as well, such as Smoky Jail, whereby he just traps a target in a dome of transmuted and manipulated smoke. Quite a powerful one as well, with even absurdly powerful figures such as Shaipuf being unable to penetrate penetrated without condensing himself into a series of particle-sized life forms. But in essence, Moral really is the prime example of an individual who has not only 
brilliantly mastered manipulation but also brilliantly incorporated it into a significantly more complex series of Hatsu that go far beyond what we've seen, shown by any pure manipulators, and gives him this supreme sense of versatility. Now moving on to other splash users, and in fact manipulation is pretty much a staple invocation in regards to controlling any type of Nen Beast or Nen Constructs, such as Netero's 100 type Guanyin Bodhisattva, Knuckles Hakaware, Shoots Disembodied Hands, as well as Raises 14 Devils, and look, yeah, you get it. Any Hatsu that involves controlling a Nen Construct absolutely has to invoke manipulation, with the exception of specialist generated abilities, of course. But another interesting fellow I'd like to highlight is a very recent addition to the Hunt Hunter cast being Zakuro Custard. And I think that he's important to dwell on for a bit because he focuses on using manipulation to control his own blood and wield it as something of a deadly weapon, which is nice and different to what we've explored thus far, as the wider use of manipulation focuses on controlling living things or imitating living things, or even manipulating the user themselves. But this is a very basic but very effective invocation of manipulation because it does not seem to come with any great restrictions in regards to Nen. Although because Zakuro is using his own blood, for practical reasons he does need to carry an IV with him at all times, and of course Zakuro also can't afford to have mass quantities of blood leave his body for too long because he will obviously do a bit of the old death. But as for another famous manipulator, according to the Hunt Hunt data book, Shiapoof himself was a natural manipulator, evidence of which can be seen in both the Beelzebub and body reconstruction Hatsu. Although his more signature abilities being the cocoon and spiritual message powers consist of unknown affinities. And it's not out of the question to hypothesize that they do involve manipulation, especially with spiritual message, because it focuses on identifying a person's psychological state and acting accordingly, as well as blatant hypnosis. And you know what? Even the cocoon power seems very much like it could be manipulating bodies of targets to transform them into a chimera ant and even grant them nen abilities. And actually come to think of it, I really don't see any other explanation for this unless Poof was a specialist, which he certainly is not. But then we also have Ikalgo, whose main ability uses conjuration actually, but he has the notable Hatsu that allows him to control corpses, much like Kilami, although Ikalgo has a much more unpleasant restriction, being that he has to insert himself into said corpse, which sounds fun. Oh, and to cap off our manipulators, apparently Zushi is also a natural manipulator, so good on him. But in essence, manipulation is probably the most straightforward sounding Nen Affinity. However, it's actually full of absurd subtlety and nuance. And oddly enough, manipulation is actually one of the more foundational uses of Nen. It certainly doesn't have to be used on its own. And I would argue that the best uses we've seen are in combination with other disciplines. But then again, there are also figures like Ilami or Sharnak who are just too damn powerful to deny the potential of pure manipulation as well. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're keen for some more Hunt Hunter content, then please do go and check out some of my other videos or even subscribe to the channel for regular Hunt Hunter glory delivered straight into your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the New World Review and I'll see you next time.